All right, I wanted to give my bit on the overclocking part, and uh, before I, I get into it, I wanted to give uh, really my my own reason for overclocking, and that is that I get more out of my products that I that I purchased um, for really putting in very little effort and getting out a lot of gain, and um, I've really seen a lot of the results, uh, especially. Uh, for gaming as it is my gaming rig but also in video production and that uh, I do um, use Sony Vegas uh, on it as well so um, really uh, if I can get away with it uh, like I, I give you an example of souping up a car for very little money and I the little money that I invest in the car and the performance that I get out of it is well worth it I'm gonna do it uh, I, I mean I remember uh, years back when I would put chips in my car and alter the fuel air mixture and stuff like that but it's the same thing that I that I found with computers that um, uh, I can up its performance for very little cost and get a lot of gain out of it so I'll go ahead and get uh, into uh, my bio screen here all right here we are we're looking at um, I'm already into the advanced part of my bio screen um, really uh, this is just the uh, overclocking page or several other pages to it. Every motherboard is going to have a different uh, BIOS version and or um, some may not even have as many features as others. Uh, some of you may not even be able to overclock. A lot, some of them will have governors uh, or limitations or settings that you have to unlock in order to overclock them. This specific version has a couple, I think it's two settings that I need to change and um, then I'll be able, to, uh, I'm able to overclock it uh, once I eliminate those settings. Uh, and for this version, it's it's basically auto auto settings that automatically manage the CPU and stuff like that. So I've turned those off in order to set my own. Now, uh, real quick, uh, this motherboard has a multiplier of eight, and a multiplier uh, is basically the amount of cycles. So we're, this, if you can imagine, the the CPU uh, will run the number that the multiplier is, whether it's 10, 8, what what have you, uh, cycles uh, for every, um, I guess you could say, cycle in the uh, bus, because the bus is, is transporting what the CPU is doing. So it's running these eight cycles, if you will, and per every cycle that the the data is going back and forth on that bus. So I take the multiplier, which is 8, and I come down here to my CPU frequency, which you, which you see is 400. So 400 times 8, 3,200, 3, right? So we convert that to 3.2 gigahertz. So um, I think the, this is an E6400 in, Intel, and I think its stock is 2.1, so at least via the frequency, I have upped it from 2.1 gigahertz to 3.2 gigahertz. Now, just doing the frequency, and by the way, this below it right here is the RAM frequency, I need to give it the power to do so. Now, that's where you really need to get cautious because um, I've seen many just play with the frequency and boot in. Now, uh, a lot of times uh, it's unstable, and so sometimes you can't even boot in, or if you make it into the operating system, it crashes, or maybe nothing happens, but you don't get any performance gain. Well, uh, the primary reasons for that is that you're not giving it enough power. The power for at least CPU comes here from the CPU V-core voltage right here. Now, I ha I I've upped it from its stock, which was at 1.375. And I incrementally, I, I never recommend that you just immediately go from 1.375 to, let's say, 1.425 or 1.41, any of them. You, I, I highly recommend that you do this incrementally. And, uh, and that goes for the frequency. So you can up your frequency slowly along with your uh, voltage here and then boot into your system. I mean, it is a, it is a process that requires some patience. Um, but you, you incrementally do this and you build in your system and if you have no errors you just keep going until you do get some sort of crash or instability and then you move back to the safest setting and um, 
you can assume that that's going to be the setting that you're going to test at because even though you found a setting where you've had uh, signs of stability, you need to test that stability. So I'll go ahead and put it back to where it was. You notice that the memory voltage is a little is a little higher in, in this uh, uh, motherboard color codes things where it thinks it's a little high for the range. Um, most of the time I'm running uh, it at a thousand on on my my RAM here, and this is this is frequency here for the RAM. And it's important that you keep the the frequencies, whether it's CPU frequency, uh, in line with your PCI frequency because everything has to really if you're going to really increase the cycles of your CPU you should increase the cycles of memory or you're going to be burning cycles in the CPU or really wasting cycles or they're doing nothing because nothing else is at the same speed so you want to make sure everything else is at a speed that can handle it and that goes to your uh, upping your voltage on your front and side bus this is the pipes that I was talking about um, where, where, where we were talking about the multiplier, how many CPU cycles for front side bus cycle. Your MCH, or, your, or you can call it your north bridge and south bridge. Your north bridge uh, is, is a, a middleman. So we have our bus, so the CPU is sending, is sending uh, its information over the bus, and then it, it's going to be met by the middleman on the north bridge. The north bridge can then send it to whether it's a memory or your GPU, what have you, or it's the south bridge where the bus is sending uh, its information to the south bridge and the south bridge then manages it to the, your PCI slots. So you want to make sure that everything uh, is somewhat synced and all running on this, on, on this at the same speed or, or at the speeds within the hardware manufacturing settings that you can read uh, and your manuals uh, when you up your frequencies on, on, on the comparable, comparable frequencies of the other devices on the motherboard. So um, really that's it in its most simplistic form. Uh, I don't really want to get too techy and bore everybody, but um, I thought I'd, I'd go ahead and give a, a general showing of everything and a, a simple explanation of it, um, as I had a request to kind of kind of go over overclocking a bit. So, all right. So after you've uh, found that stable setting and you're overclocking, uh, like I had uh, sort of touched upon before is um, you, you need to do further testing to ensure that your system is really stable at those overclock settings. And what I usually do is I run torture tests and um, I, I use two products. There is a, um, uh, it's, uh, there's a they're, they're both free. Um, one's called Prime 95 and Prime 95 basically is a um, uh, instructions and calculations um, uh, what have you testing various whether it's a CPU or, or, or memory uh, that a server sends your, your computer to process and so uh, it of course works it harder than normal I usually run two prime 95s at the uh, same time or I'll run orthos and uh, run orthos uh, torture test and uh, let it run for a few hours and I and I do this I do this for both um, uh, whether it's Prime 95 or Orthos, that I run them for a few hours and, and ensure that uh, the system um, is stable, it doesn't crash, because the quite frankly the RAM and the CPU is going to be pushed very hard and it's going to start running very hot. And um, so really, if you have no no problems, um, your settings are stable. Uh, if you do have problems, you might want to back off the uh, overclocking a bit and, and then repeat the procedure. Uh, until you're able to really run some some thorough tests, because you could be in the middle of um, something important, and all of a sudden, you know, the chip gets too hot and it crashes, and you lose your work. So, um, that is the uh, pain in the ass part, I guess you could say, of overclocking is is, is doing the testing. Uh, I've kept it pretty simple. Uh, if you have any specific questions, feel free to message me. Um, I really didn't want to get too techy on it um, because uh, I mean you can get into a bunch of math or questions like well, what's your uh, hardware manufacturer and so on and so forth. Anyway, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message me. I really wanted to keep the uh, video short and, and, and simple. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.